If you're having a little trouble differentiating between a PMC and a scav, PMCs can be silly little things they like to pretend to be scavs sometimes. Well, you've come to the right place. We'll help you make a distinction between them, so in the future you'll be a little more sure which is which and who is who. We'll also talk about fence reputation, how you can get your karma up, what to do and what not to do from our own experience, how to avoid gear fear and how playing nice and cooperating benefits you. Oh yeah, and also why the PMC pouch can come in handy sometimes. In Escape from Tarkov, the PMC, either Bear or Yusek, is your main character. You can choose to either play with your PMC or with a scav. When your PMC runs out of money, you can choose to play with a scav. Player-controlled scavs usually spawn with random gear, equipment and loot. So your scav will spawn with other scavs, usually AI scavs. At this moment, you are considered friendly, but if you cause any harm to any other scav, they will turn against you because now you are their enemy. The main objective of any scav is to loot and to survive. Playing as a scav, there is a better chance of retaining your loot if you do not successfully extract. However, that is not the case when you play with your PMC. You can lose some of your most expensive things. And of course, this leads to gear fear, which we will explain later on in the video. A lot of players like to dress their PMCs to look more like a scav. This PMC has an Ushanka ear flap hat on its head and a half mask covering its face, glasses, a scav vest and he is carrying a TOZ rifle. This is how scavs usually dress, apart from a few minor things that can tell us that this in fact is not a real scav. So, this is why players who are PMCs like to dress this way and impersonate scavs so that they can trick the real scavs into thinking that they are one of them. One of the things that is off about our PMC pretending to be a scav is he has a gun holster and his gloves look pretty new to me. So pay attention to the gun holster, sometimes their shoes are brand new too, like real tactical boots and, of course, their gloves. This is an image of a typical PMC. We see that he does in fact have a gun holster, also known as a leg holster because it's on his leg. Now this is a common characteristic of all PMCs, but rarely do we see scavs having them. He has new gloves, his clothes fit him really nicely, he has warm tactical boots on, a bulletproof vest, combat helmet, knee pads, and everything goes together very well, it's all compact. On the other hand, this is a typical scav, nothing fits together. Scavs are scavengers, they take what's left over. So their gear and clothes are a mishmash of things. They typically don't have a leg holster. Take a look at their gloves and the colors they have on. Now, scavs are different from PMCs because they wear civilian clothing that are sometimes dirty and old and ragged, and they are equipped with below par weapons. They usually wear a cap and a ski mask, or they don't have anything on their heads at all, no protection. It's easy to differentiate between them because of their pants, also and by their shoes, because they usually wear sneakers or very poor shoes like slides with holes in their socks. Now this scav has managed to scavenge himself a nice pair of boots, unlike the previous fella with slides and holes in his socks. Other scavs have green tactical pants or what looks like green tactical pants. Now this can cause some confusion and one might even think it's a PMC instead of a scav. But it's still a mishmash of things. 
There is a difference between AI scavs and player scavs. AI scavs have predetermined movements and mannerisms. They have a predetermined patrol route. They walk, stop, pretend to loot, even try to loot the equipment of fallen players. They stay in one place, just like this guy. Sometimes they just look around and check their magazines. And they also have Russian voice lines. They're pretty easy to beat, but don't disregard them completely. Player scavs have to think about their karma so they won't automatically shoot you because they think you're a scav, they think you're one of them. This gives you an advantage to eradicate them. This isn't the same with AI scavs because they will not hesitate to shoot you every time. Your fence reputation is also important. Fence is a trader that buys stuff no one else wants or even needs because the things are not that great. You can sell him anything, even broken stuff. The other traders only buy specific things while Fence buys them at a lower price. Fence reputation is still important. When you get a 6.0 in reputation or karma, you earn benefits such as the best scav spawn or landouts. Scav bosses won't attack you. You'll have the support of AI scavs. And you can increase your scav karma by surviving raids 0.01, by killing PMCs, extracting via the car. The first successful extraction gets you 0.2. And afterwards, every successful extraction with the car gives you less karma. This table shows us how we can increase our scav karma and of course how to decrease it or lose scav karma. The most important thing is for you to be a friendly scav or for you to find a friendly PMC and for you to extract together. The green color marks how much karma you'll get for certain activities. The red color shows us how much karma could be lost if you aren't being a good scav. Along with your PMC, nowadays even your scavs get quests. So, scavs also have to go on a quest which is given to them by the trader fence. You receive a quest every 24 hours. After the quest is successfully completed, you get an award and scav karma. Mainly 0.01 .01, and for harder quests it's 0.03. .03. Cooperating with other friendlies is very important. Hey, man. Do you want to get out together? I'm scammed. Uh, okay. I will come out. Are you PMC? Yeah. Yeah, we can get out together if you want. If you want to show other potential friendlies that you're also a friendly, it is best to use a knife instead of a rifle. Thank you. I will follow you guys. Someone is outside, on the left. Someone is on the left. Now, if you are a PMC and you come upon a friendly scav in a raid, or you come upon a friendly PMC if you are a scav, you can ask him if he wants to extract with you through VoIP.
If the extract is successful, you receive scav karma for your first extraction. In every map, you get 0.25 karma, but every map does not have a co-op extract, like customs and factory. After this, you may receive less karma than initially, even though your extraction was successful. Unfortunately, you have to be careful because you can't trust everyone because they might not be friendly. Interchange is one of the best places to find friendlies, unlike woods, where it is harder due to the map's size. Now let's explain what gear fear is. This is the fear of losing expensive equipment which you've taken into a raid. A lot of players don't want to take their meta rifle in with them because they are afraid of losing it. Sometimes it's so easy to lose it. Even equipment that you've invested a lot of money in could be lost. This is mostly a problem for beginners and those who are weaker players. Even the best players don't take it lightly when they lose their best equipment. It's easier to play with a scav because their equipment isn't as good. It's easier to go into a battle with a scav because if you kill a more equipped PMC, the gain is bigger. The problem is when a scav spawns with valuable things like a GPU. That is when the only option is to extract and avoid a confrontation. That is their only goal. If you find something of value, you can always put it in your pouch. This is a safe place where you can put valuable things. So if you don't survive a raid, you still get to keep what you've found and left in the pouch, but you won't be able to sell it in the flea market because it loses its check mark that it has been found in a raid. In this case, you can only sell it to the traders for less. Valuable things include GPU, money, keys, keycards, things that are important for your quest etc.